Now, what I'd like to do is uh, invite our first speaker up, and uh, his name is Jim Painter, uh, Vice President, uh, retired of the, from the Cowpen Mill of uh, U.S. Corrugated. So please join me in welcoming Jim Painter to the podium. And again, please uh, write down your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Uh, I'm from a paper mill in Calpin, South Carolina, recently retired. The mill was built in 1992, and uh, I was hired in 1997 to either improve it or close it. Uh, and I was actually going to get more money for closing it than improving it, but that's not nearly as much fun. Uh, so the first thing I needed to do was develop trust with the employees and our vendors and partnerships with our employees and our vendors. And as I heard the people talk this morning about what do you do for the future employee, I think the employee has to trust you. And if you think your company can do everything better than your vendors, I think that's a big mistake. So we said about the first thing is getting our employees to trust us. We changed all the rules about productivity and waste and all that stuff. And we said the most important thing is to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do or to treat people the way you want to be treated. And of course, a cornerstone had to be safety. When I joined the mill, the incident rate was 17. That means 17 out of every 100 employees had a medical or lost time accident. The last lost time accident at the mill was about seven years ago, and we terminated the employee for violating one of our safety rules. To give you an idea how this pays off, uh, the Cowpens mill is projected to make 248,000 tons this year. It has 105 employees, so that's 2,360 tons per employee. Another mill in South Carolina is going to make 800,000 tons. It's a virgin mill. It has 895 employees, so that's 895 tons per employee. Now, I need to be honest with you and tell you that a virgin mill uh, has to take trees in and make the pulp out of it where the cowpens mill takes old corrugated containers. So if you double that 900 tons to 1,800 tons, you still see that the cowpens mill is way ahead in terms of energy for employee. So just to repeat, the cowpens mill is an FDA approved 100% recycled high performance lighter board and medium mill with a totally closed water system. It's going to make 248,000 tons this year. That means it's going to take 290,000 tons of recycled cardboard and mixed waste out of landfills. It's got 105 employees, and our vision was for the Cowpens Mill to be the safest, highest quality, and lowest cost liner board mill in the world. And also for the cow, that the Cowpens Mill will strive to be the best environmental mill in the industry and to be recognized as excellent stewards of the environment where we operate. And I'll let you decide on how we're doing. 1992, the mill was built, and they spent about $5 million on a water processing system to allow the water, the discharge water, to go to the city. And the system didn't work. So they had to close the mill. So since after the first few months, the mill has never discharged any water. I joined the mill in 1997. In 1998, we added a water clarification and fiber recovery system. What that meant was our, the water going back into the paper making process went from about 2,000 parts per million suspended solids to about 100 parts per million. In 2001, we installed the first ultra filtration system ever in a paper mill. I still think that's the only one in a paper mill. Uh, we also installed a process to pelletize our waste materials. Now, these waste materials are short fiber, styrofoam, and plastic 
that we were sending to the landfill. So we reduced our landfill costs by approximately 60%. The other good thing was uh, we started selling the pellets and they're sold today. So our landfill cost actually, if you, if you add back in what we sell the pellets for, is about 25 to 30% of what it was in 2001. The next step was to add nanofiltration, uh, and, and I'll show you in a minute what all that looks like. Uh, this is what the ultra nanofiltration systems look like. They're long tubes with filters in them, many miles of tubes. So we pump the water through there, and whatever water gets through the filter, we now reuse. 1995, that's what the mill effluent looked like. When we call it effluent, but that's the water we pump back to the mill to make paper, so the quality of the paper wasn't very good. After we put the clarifier in, it supplied 1,500 gallons a minute to the mill, and you can see what that looked like. The permeate from the ultrafiltration is 200 gallons a minute. You can see what that looks like. Uh, nanofiltration, 20 gallons a minute. And the guy that put the nanofiltration in actually said the water was so clean you could drink it. He put it in a cup and turned it up to his lips and he acted like he was drinking it, but there were none of us that were brave enough to drink water that had been through the paper making process, so we didn't do that. What, the way we did this is we partnered with a chemical company called Nalco, and some of the major achievements came from the first thing we did with NALCO was we changed the retention program that resulted in a 50% reduction in sulfates. Now to open mill that doesn't really matter because the sulfates go out with their wastewater. But to a closed mill the sulfates just build up and build up and build up. We also by improving the effluent water treatment we were able to use the clarified water as make down water for our chemicals and since 1999, that saved us over 200 million gallons of fresh water a year. We also changed the location of where we put the dry strength chemical in the paper machine. We used a spray bar rather than, th rather than thin stock, which improved the press solids by 2%, reduced our energy consumption by 7%, and increased the throughput by 7%, and also improved chemical retention. To give you an idea of what this means, the cowpen mills consumes about 250,000 gallons of water a day. Of the 250,000 gallons, about 90,000 gallons is used for the boiler. In an open mill, they don't even count the water going to the boiler so, because it's so significant. How does that compare? Well, an open virgin craft mill uses 10 to 12 million gallons of water per ton of paper they produce. Now remember, about half of that is being used in the process of chipping and pulping the wood. An open recycle mill uses 4,000 to 6,000 gallons per ton. TAPI, which is an industry standard, says that, that world-class industry should use 2,000 gallons per ton. When we made this slide, the Cowpens mill was using about 375 gallons per ton, and that number is now below that. Another partner for us, and I just can't say enough about this partner, was ABB Control System. In 1995, their distributive control systems was installed. It's been continually upgraded, uh, and two of the major improvements for us was what we call real-time real data. And about seven or eight years ago, we started with a fingerprint diagnosis process. This is a picture of our control room, and you'll notice there's one guy in there. Uh, we make 750 to 800 tons a day with 13 employees and a team leader. They work 12-hour shifts, four days on, four days off. If you look at the monitors, when we first purchased the distributive control system from ABB, they came in with, with uh, screens from mills where they had worked in the past, and they certainly worked. But within no time, our employees started complaining, this doesn't look like our plant, uh, these things aren't the same way. So we called ABB and said, can you send somebody down here to redo these screens for us? Well, they redid the screens, and, and in no time, 
Uh, before I think before the guy was even on the airplane, our employees were complaining we need to make improvements on the screen. Partnering with, vendor, with vendors, what happened was ABB sent people down to train our people. So our people now change all of the screens. Uh, anything we want to change, we can do it in-house. The fingerprint study. Uh, a paper mill is a process. We put fiber and water in a big tub and beat it up. Then we do all kind of things to the fiber to get it ready. Then we have the paper making process. Hundreds of pumps, miles of pipes, all kind of computers and electronic devices. And when one fails, it costs this mill about $10,000 an hour to be down. The fingerprint study, these guys came in and they started looking at our systems. And they did analysis of the systems, and it's, this now happens once a month unless something goes wrong. And this analysis we would do about two weeks before a scheduled shutdown, and they would tell us things like, well, you've got a valve that the flow coming out of it is starting to oscillate. And we could send a mechanic or an electrician to look at it to either change the driver or mechanically change it, whatever. Or a rotating unit is starting to fail. A pump is starting to fail. Uh, I'll show you in a little while the uptime of the mill, which is, which is world class. Another thing, uh, I talked about the reel being built real time. This is a picture of the rewinder on the right is a reel. Our reels are 18 tons. It goes through a rewinder and it's cut into rolls that our customers can handle. What we had was once we built the reel, uh, we then got quality data. And we asked ABB, could we not get the quality data while the reel is being built? Now the reason for that is once we got 18 tons and it's 3 o'clock in the morning and there's some question about the quality, the supervisor or somebody's got to decide, do I cut that into rolls and ship it to our customer or, or do I scrap it? And with a bonus system, he had pressure not to scrap it and you know what happened. Well, with a real time, real data, the guys in the control room can see something that starts to go wrong just a little bit and correct it so there's never a problem. The last reject we had for paper quality was six years ago. Now we've had rejects for rolls on the wrong truck or a guy set a roll down and scraped the edge of it, but from a paper performance standpoint, it was six years ago. We partnered with the electric company. We started asking Duke Energy, which will soon be the largest electrical provider in the United States, they're, they're acquiring another company, what did they do with their off-peak energy? And, and, and they didn't know what we were talking about. We said, well, when your turbines are running, turning, and, and it's nighttime, do you send anybody home because it's nighttime? Well, obviously the answer is no. We said, well, why don't you sell that to us off peak at a lower rate and we'll consume it? Well, it took a while for them to think that through. They thought it was a good idea. So they paid for us to put an electric boiler in. We were to pay them back in nine months out of the savings. We saved the amount of money the electric boiler installation cost in six months, actually five and a half months, and we were paying 1.72 cents per kilowatt. The average kilowatt cost for the rest of the mill was three and a half cents. Today, this unit's mothballed. It's sitting there, but it's mothballed because of the price of electricity. But it can be started up at any time. Another vendor we partnered with was Voith. They're a paper making machine company. When paper, when water comes out of the head box of the paper machine, it's 99.5% water and a half percent fiber. When it gets to the other end of the paper machine, it's either 7 or 9% water and the rest of it's fiber. So the fiber tries to align itself and does align itself in the paper making direction. Most of the fiber is that way. When they use that paper to make corrugated boxes, the corrugated goes across it. When they make the boxes, they want the strength in the cross machine direction. So how did we get the fiber to turn from the machine direction to the cross machine direction? Hope this works. Can you see that roll going back and forth? It's moving the wire back and forth 
and it's actually turning the fibers before they're set. Significant improvement in strength and tons produced. So what does this mean from an energy standpoint? Well, the average liner board mill consumes about 8,400 pounds of steam per ton of paper and about 9.7 million BTUs per ton of paper. You can see what the TAPI standard is and what the Cowpens mill now does. And I'll talk to you in a minute about a plan we have to make that 4.5 million BTUs down to 3.5. What does it mean to our customers? Well, this mill's a recycled mill. In the past, there's been no question but what a virgin mill made stronger, better paper than a recycled mill. For the last 10 years, our customers have used our recycled sheet interchangeably with a virgin sheet. One of our big trade customers was Smurfit. We traded about 75,000 tons a year with them. When we started trading with them, they shipped the paper to a number of plants around us, but their flagship plant was in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where they were produced the most and uh, had the best results. And they didn't want our paper to go there because their mills were having a very difficult time meeting their quality specs. Well, when you ship somebody 75,000 tons, eventually the paper gets into that plant. It did. And the Smurfit pro uh, quality people called us one day and said, we'd like to come visit your mill. And of course, we originally thought, uh-oh, what's wrong? They came in, they went around the mill, and they sat down with us and they said, the reason we're here is because our Winston-Salem mill says you're their preferred supplier. They have a brand new 110 BHS corrugator and the Cowpens mill makes the best and flattest sheet of any paper we get. In 2010, Paper 360, which is a paper industry publication, came to the mill and after studying the mill, they proclaimed that the Cowpens mill was probably one of the most environmentally friendly and sustainable mills in the world. From a leadership standpoint, we received several awards. Uh, in 2000, we received DHEX Best Industry Recycling Program Award. We received several DOE grants. Uh, today, ozone is used in water treatment throughout the world, and, and that process was started in our mill. We've also looked at biogas production, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And we're also, we've also been Duke Energy's Power, Provard, Power Partner Award. Uh, in terms of the industry, the industry looks at the paper mills, all those people that contribute, and uh, they select the efficiency of the mills. Uh, you, you provide them information, they say, here's where you stand. You don't know who anybody else is, but your mill. There were three or four pages of this, and, and the number two mill is the Cal Pen Pens Mill at 94.05. Today, that's up around 96. We do have a problem, though. As production has continued to increase, dissolved solids has increased in the water, and conductivity has increased in the water. Now, remember, we're not discharging any water. So the next step for us is biological treatment. Well, what does that mean? Well, when we get corrugated boxes in, by weight, two to four percent is starch. That starch going into our water, two to four percent of seven or eight hundred tons a day, ends up being 27 to 30 tons of starch or COD put into the water every day. The biological reactor uses anaerobic bacteria, bugs, to digest the COD and convert it into biogas. The biogas unit will provide about 10% of the total steam energy required for the mill. We'll, we'll use it in our boilers. The removal of the COD from the water will provide cleaner process water for the mill. Anaerobic treatment will be added to the aerobic treatment will be added to the anaerobic treatment effluent and will clean the water even further. And what we're hoping is to get a DOE grant to help us with this. Let me give you an idea of what that means. If you look at capstone currently, that's the Cowpens mill, showing you the total dissolved solids, the COD, the conductivity, and the VFAs. 
And you can see what happens in an open recycle mill. Well, what's the difference? The difference is in an open recycle mill, all that materials goes out with the water. Nothing leaves the cow pen's mill. So with a biological reactor, you can see that we can make a closed paper mill equal to a open paper mill. So what are the impacts on water quality? Cleaner water, cleaner water will result in fiber, better fiber bonding leading to stronger and lighter paper. We estimate that 7,800 tons of fiber or 130,000 trees will be saved annually by this reduction at the cow pens mill alone. The additional benefits of reduced basis weight is $1.2 million in savings in raw materials and we'll put more footage on the rolls for our customers, which means they'll have less splices and waste and less downtime. And the fact that there's more footage on the rolls means we won't have to ship as much. So approximately 390 trucks a year will reduce the fuel load. We will get more efficient drying, consuming less energy, and we'll have less chemical usage. What does this mean? Cleaner water means thinner, lighter, stronger paper, and improved margins for the mill and our customers. Long before sustainability was an industry and pop culture buzzword, the capstone paper worked to establish and improve programs and processes that have helped create an industry standard that others now emulate. Thank you.